What's up, YouTube? Today, we're going to talk about alternative foods for your blue tongue skinks, and that is mealworms. So you can actually breed mealworms at your home, and some people actually do it for their own source of protein. But today, we're going to talk about doing it for your blue tongues. So there's two ways to do it. There's the tiered setup like I have here, or you could do more of a bulk setup. So in this one here, you have different shelves. The top one, you are going to basically cut majority of the bottom out, and then you're going to hot glue screen to it. That way, you're going to put the beetles in that top section, and then you're going to put food all over the screen, and then when the beetles lay their eggs, they're going to move around, and then the eggs are going to fall into the middle section down below. And then when that's about halfway full of eggs and it will end up getting poop and various chunks of food down there as it falls, you will switch that to the bottom level and then you will move the bottom one up and you'll rotate it. And then you'll start noticing those bottom ones where the eggs are, they're going to start hatching and you're going to get the worms. And then the worms grow up and then you're back into the beetle stage and you rotate. Now, the, another method is the bulk method, which I'll show you now. The pro and con to each method is some of them you'll have to do more work. And others you'll have maybe not as high a success rate. So in the bulk rate, you basically have everything together in a tub. So right here we have a 28-quart Sterilite tub. We have air holes all around the sides. Basically, we have various egg crates and flat cardboard. And the cardboard, we chose various thicknesses on it. That way, the worms can get in, but the beetles cannot. And why we did this, the worms will go in the holes, and then they'll become pupas. And... That's where you get some of the cannibalism. The beetles will eat the pupas if there's not enough food, not enough moisture, various things like that. So that's where you don't get as high a success rate. But where you have the cardboard like here, the holes are big enough for the worms to get in so they can become pupas and the beetles can't get them. So now we have various layers. You know, some of the eggs will be at the bottom layer. Then we have egg crates, then just Basically a ton of cardboard in various lengths and different sizes. Put the food on top. You can do different things like bran, lettuce, different various vegetables and scraps. But, you know, if you have a lot of stuff left over from cooking, I would just do that. You know, at the end of your carrots you chop off, for example. You get where I'm going, you know, if you can use scraps. Otherwise, here... This is basically uh, ground up rabbit food and other things mixed together that we use. And then we got it moistened. And I think that's part of the key. If you don't have enough moisture in the food, that's when they start to cannibalize. You know, no setup is perfect. You'll have to do different things for each one. But it seems like on the bulk setup while we got here, if set up right, it works pretty good. You don't have to do a huge setup if you only have one blue tongue or one gecko or wherever, but you can grow it as you want. And even if you don't want to individually feed mealworms, you could also use those insects and in like a chow that you make for your blue tongue also. Well, I hope this was beneficial. Please like and subscribe and thanks for stopping by.